Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have a piece of flowering plum. This comes to us from Dave at Calmwood Creations. Dave contacted me and sent me a picture of this and he said, you know what, I'm afraid it's going to split before I can get to it. Uh, it was cut recently, I think in the last couple of weeks, and uh, he wanted to send it to me if I thought I could do anything with it, and of course I do think I can do something with it. It's roughly 11 inches squarish and about an inch and a half thick, depending on where you measure. So I'm thinking live edge platter, shallow bowl something along those lines. I've marked out a center hole right here and I'm going to take this over to my drill press and I'm gonna cut a large three and a half inch hole so that I can mount up my woodworm screw and the jaws will have something flat to set against. So I'll bring you back here in a couple of minutes when I'm ready to get this mounted up on the lathe. So here's what I have is a large circle with a nice flat bottom for my chuck jaws to set against and I've drilled a hole there for the woodworm screw so we'll just get that screwed on there. Well it's a little bit out of balance and I've noticed a crack here. Now I also noticed that Dave had circled this crack. So it must have been there and I didn't notice it. I, I didn't notice his his circle and I didn't notice the crack but it's opened up pretty good I, I don't think it was that big to start with or I should have noticed it I'm going to uh, come in here from the side I can only turn it about 570 rpm because it is out of balance and just flatten this off and uh, probably probably up sweep the sides here a little bit and it'll have a fairly large base on it I suppose but I feel bad because I can't work on this tomorrow and I can't get it finished today. So I'm afraid when I come back at this in, in a couple of days that it's going to be cracked worse than it is. I don't know. And of course we have this crack here. That was always there. I'm not real worried about that. It looks like it's secured on the other side. On the other hand, this whole part here might go flying. I don't know. I'm just going to work at it as fast as I can for... Our uh, what remains of the day. It's kind of late right now. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon So I probably won't get a whole lot done, but hopefully I'll get the bottom done sanded finished turned around Maybe I can get on the top side. I don't know. I don't work that fast. I'm an old guy So 570 rpm 5 8 inch freshly sharpened bowl gouge mask and face shield on Oh, they're pretty pink curls, huh? Ooh. Yeah, looking okay. Okay, go back to work on the bottom here and make a tenon and a base. Okay, that'll work. Okay, I'm gonna suck it up and try and finish this today. I, I just like it way too much. Look at that, just wonderful natural edge. That is so incredible. And the beautiful colors in here. So I'm gonna start sanding mm, probably at 150 grit. Uh, I'll sand up through 400 and I'm going to apply Howard Feed and Wax. And the reason, well, 
there's a lot of reasons. I'm always telling you the good reasons for it. Uh, but it says right on the label, it says it stops further drying. So I, I doubt if they mean from green wood like this is. This is about 35% moisture content. I doubt if they mean that. But at least maybe it'll slow it down and keep it from cracking. And that one crack that I had that uh, Dave had circled is gone. So apparently I cut that away. So all we have is this. And this is kind of a, a natural thing. If you could see the top side, which I showed you earlier, you can see why that's there. And I really like it, and I like the shape that I have here. So I'm going to sand it, put the Howard Feed and Wax on, flip it around, hollow it out, sand it, put the Howard Feed and Wax on, and call it good. So I'm going to try and get that done today. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. This is my quitting time, but I'm going to work until dark. Or... Hopefully not later than that. Lay the spinning in reverse at 350 RPM. Well, that was quick and easy to sand, and I appreciate that. I don't turn green wood much. If you watch me very often, you know that that's the case. I just don't turn it. So I don't know what to expect always. You know, usually when you apply any finish, but Howard Feed and Wax especially, I've noticed, it really brings out the grain and the colors. And I don't know if that's happening here. I mean, I see some pink. I see some brown. I see some, you know, tan color, whatever. I don't know if it'll turn color with age. But I checked the label again because I told you that this says it stops drying and I read the label and the words are prevents further drying. It should at least slow it down. I just can't believe it can prevent green wood. It doesn't specify. But there we go. I'll let that set for about 20 minutes. I'll buff it up, turn it around, and bring you back when it's time to start working on the inside. See you in a bit. We're going to be turning at about 900 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. make sure I don't go too deep here. I'm down about half an inch on the bottom. I can actually go a little deep and maybe a little further out on the sides. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding, as you might guess, with my sandal flex. I'm going to start with 120 grit, however. Normally I do 180 grit on the bark, but this is in kind of sad shape. Plus, oh well, I thought there was some moss, but I guess I cut that away. Anyway, I'm going to do 120 grit, and then I'll switch to 180 grit for the bark, and, and that's where I will stop which is typical. And I'll show you how that's going to work. And then I'm going to switch to two inch sanding disc at uh, also 120 grit. And I'll work that up through 400. As soon as I get my mask on, I'll show you how that's all going to work. That's forward, then I'll do it in reverse. And then I'm sure I'll do some like that while I'm holding it still. And then I'll switch to 180 for that. And then with the lathe spinning forward at about 350.
And then I'll alternate between forward and reverse. And that doesn't look like it's going to cause any problems. So I should be back here in about a half an hour ready to put some finish on. See you in a bit. So beautiful. I'm going to brush this onto the bark. And I'm also going to call it a night. I'm not going to remove the tenon tonight. I don't think, uh, I don't think that'll hurt anything leaving that. It's dark out boys and girls. It's like 730 and I'm hungry. You know what I mean? My cat probably wants to go in. He's been out all day and he's probably cold. So I will get this applied, wait 20 minutes, buff it up, and, uh, and call it a night. So I'll see you back here. I think I might have time in the morning to do this. I hope, I hope I do. If not, it'll be the next day. Looking good, huh? Hopefully see you tomorrow. Well, I came out today, which is two days later. I just could not get at this yesterday. Not enough time. All I have to do is remove that tenon. However, now the problem, and I'm disappointed, but it's not unexpected. It's not a surprise. That bark inclusion has split. This one over here seems to have stopped completely, and this one actually has stopped completely right here at the end of the bark inclusion. And this doesn't wiggle on this side. But this one does wiggle and that's not so good so I'm going to attempt to fix it I don't hold a lot of hope out but I'm gonna try so I'm gonna take some uh, medium CA and put in here the good part is it goes right through my tenon so I can clamp that back up right there and that's just a natural built-in perfect clamp but I will also put a clamp across in an attempt to pull it all together when I when I do pull it together I can still see a little bit of light in some areas I don't know if you can see the light coming through there or not I can but there are some areas that uh, close up including the tenon and this tenon is already below the rim so I don't have to remove all of it just some of it so maybe there'll be enough in there to hold it along with whatever holds it through the rest of the crack, I don't know. I'm going to have to work quickly because I don't want this running out the other side. Although, since it's already got the finish on there, uh, if I can wipe it off quickly enough, I don't think there will be any real damage. And this piece is still very silky smooth. I didn't know if being turned green if it would still feel that way after it started drying or what and I checked the moisture content on this when I came out and it's about uh, 15 to 18 percent depending on where you measure it I'm gonna put it up in the chuck jaws now I actually have to squeeze it together to get it back in the chuck I haven't changed the chuck jaws since I took it out so they're still set but it doesn't want to fit in there unless I squeeze it together and that's a good thing sorry I need to move the light back here so I can see what I'm doing the chuck jaws make an impression in the wood so my job is to get it back into those same impressions which is kind of tough I've got the jaws just about tightened and I'm just wiggling them around until I can feel that impression then I'm pushing on the ball then I'm tightening the chuck jaws a little bit now I'm just going to take some accelerator and I'm going to spray it oh boy that did close up real nice that did close up real nice this might work I'm going to hit it from the other side as well. Boy, that did close up way better than I thought, and I haven't even put the other clamps on yet. Which I better hurry and do, since I already put the accelerator on there, you big stupid. So just a little bit of pressure. And I'm going to put another one across the top side here. I'll give it a couple of minutes, and we'll see if it worked.
I'll be right back. Okay, I actually gave it probably a half an hour. I don't know if it's going to hold. The proof is in the pudding, as they say, whatever that means. I never knew. So I'm going to release the tension. I've taken the clamps off. I'm going to release the tension of the chuck jaws. I've got you lined up here where you can see if it separates or not. I'm scared that it's going to. Here comes the release. Hey. Well, I hope it didn't get glued into the chuck jaws. <laughs> I, think it, I think it did a little bit. You know what? It held. Let me get it mounted on the lathe here and we'll take off that tenon maybe. I've mounted a block of wood up on my chuck. I'm going to put a piece of non-slip material over that and then the bowl. Bring up my tailstock. I still have the center hole there for reference. I'm going to apply a little pressure. Now that applying the pressure part, that scares me because it may be an unequal amount on the two sides of the split. I don't want to apply so much pressure that I split that again, but I need enough pressure to hold it. So it's kind of a kind of a guessing game. I'm going to bring up my tool rest and I'm going to take a 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge. I'm going to turn the speed of the lathe up to about 600 RPM. It has a uh, it has shrunk unevenly so that it's not running terribly true which is kind of a bummer but that's what we're stuck with so that's 600 rpm 3 8 inch standard grind bowl gouge and start removing the tenon Now I'm going to slow the speed down to about 400 RPM. Now I'm going to grab a 3 8 inch swept back bowl gouge and I'm going to readjust my tool rest a little bit higher and a little bit closer and attempt to finish this cut on the lathe. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to chicken out. It's so small. I'm going to take it over here to the workbench, use a chisel on it, sand it up, sign it, finish it, and I'll be right back. Well, here it is, one flowering plum bowl in the book. You know, I held it up to the light and I can see a little bit of light right here and a little bit right here. Other than that, it's solid. It's solid here, it's solid in the middle. I think we're golden. But I'll tell you what, you ask me in a couple of months, this is uh, mid-October of 2019, you ask me in a couple of months if it split further or if this other bark inclusion up here split, or where is it, down here, and I will tell you, I'm going to take it in the house today where it's nice and toasty warm instead of out here where it's freezing cold and moist and nasty. And we'll just we'll just see if it splits. But right now it's looking good. It feels good. Uh, the finish didn't get ruined. There's the bottom all finished up. It sets level. I'm I'm just amazed. I'm amazed and I'm pleasantly surprised. And I like it quite a bit. I hope you do. Thank you, Dave from Calmwood Creations, for sending this along for all to enjoy. She's a beauty. If you like this video, thumbs up please, I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly, I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.